Good evening and welcome to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Um, before we go get started, please silence your any devices you might have with you while you're in here. And also, anyone who uh, would like to speak on any of these applications, you're more than welcome. We'd like to hear from you, uh, but you have to come up to the podium, identify yourself, and use the microphone for the sake of the people watching on TV at home. <clears throat> okay, so uh, first we have voting minutes, and I believe the minutes for December 20th are not yet ready, is that correct? Yeah, okay, because Susan wasn't here, we didn't have anyone that night, so she's going to have to labor through the tapes to get those ready. All right, January 3rd, 2018, and um, that was a special, special meeting to meeting. vote minutes on one hearing. On hearing. I mean, a vote order, rather. Um, Steve. Could I ask a question? Yes. I am noted as absent, which is accurate, except for the fact that I wasn't in the quorum, so there was no reason for me to attend the meeting. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, you don't want to demerit, is that what I you're saying? I don't want to demerit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had an excused absence, we're, we're but we're still an excused absence. Uh, and, and the quorum, I didn't have a note or a quorum applies to individual <laughs> hearings, not to meetings, per se. But um, this was a vote. OK. I know, oh, OK, that was that's meeting. right. That was one meeting. Meeting. I'm sorry. I mean, we weren't here. Right. And then yes. we took the I moved to we retract the demerit from Steve Zucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you were not, ex so, I, 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 I'm sorry, I see what you're saying. And I'll um, abstain from voting on the, uh, on the minutes. should you approve <laughs> okay, these I, minutes this evening. I, I assumed when we were talking earlier, you were Ooh. talking about the other, the previous meeting. But anyway, where we didn't have minutes. Um, fine. <laughs> Enough of that. So, has anybody reviewed those minutes? Yes, I did, and I didn't find anything wrong with them. I'll second the motion to accept. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. I abstain. Okay. <laughs> I'll take you off. Actually, Steve. Th right. This you is can't abstain. No. We'll explain that to you later. I right. Why Moving I on. Abstain. Right. Because you weren't on the forum. I had the wrong meeting in mind. That's why I gave you the wrong yeah, answer I wasn't before. At the meeting. <laughs> right. Okay. Request for a continuance under an amended order of conditions. No. Wigwam Sipawisset Trust, 8 Wigwam Road, West Falmouth, Massachusetts. Request to amend the existing order of conditions, DEP 25-3590, to reconfigure the existing driveway to relocate the existing beach access sand path more north and to replant the old path to authorize existing after-the-fact modifications, including installation of stone landing at southwest corner of the house, reconfiguration of the main entry landing, installation of utilities on raised platforms, approved proposed planting revisions, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Madam Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until February 14th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right. Continued requests for determination of applicability. Claudia Pagani, Revo Revocable Trust, 100 Minot Road, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to construct a 13.6 square foot addition over the existing deck. Yes, Madam Chairman, we were recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Uh, any comments from the board? Comments from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Okay, moving on to request for hearings under a notice of intent. First, we have Royal and P Patricia Collette, 27 Grove Street, North Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to raise RAZE, the existing dwelling, and construct a single family house with underground garage, porch with stairs, install a crushed stone driveway, utilities, dry wells, native tree and shrub mitigation plantings, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Evening, Tom. Oh, gosh. Uh, if you give me a second, I forgot to read my notice. Mm -hmm. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. 
Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Evidently, I can't handle two weeks off in a row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Tom Bunker, BSS Design. Uh, we did this uh, the survey of this land and prepared this plan. Denise Benoli designed the house. I can first mention that it's not an underground garage, it's just a garage under the house. Um, but it's, it's, it's a garage nonetheless. This property, uh, there's an existing uh, small house uh, which dates about 1957 on the property. This is at, this, the property is at the uh, north edge of the Silver Beach neighborhood. Uh, See, north of Grove Street and north of that uh, large wetland that's in the, the middle of the whole neighborhood. And this is, uh, the wetland is across the street from, from the house. Uh, that wetland was uh, deline delineated by uh, LEC. Uh, it's down in this location down, down here. Um, it's uh, inland, not, not a, it's, a, it's just a vegetated wetland. Uh, it has a 50-foot zone A around it, and then the remainder, remaining 50 feet makes up the zone B of, of the wetland. <coughs> it's in the, uh, the flood zone. The elevations on the property range from uh, 6.2 up to 7.5 down here in, in the street and up to only elevation 9, up to 11 in the back. Flood zone is elevation 15. Uh, any house built on this now uh, must be elevated with the first floor above that, above the 15. So what we have is a house uh, where the first floor, shown on your plan, is elevation 17 and a half. The existing house uh, is elevation 9.6, uh, well below the flood elevation. I can point out also that this area is in, this house is in the area that was sewered. Um, and it is connected to the town sewer or the Silver Beach sewer and the, uh, the new house will also be uh, connected to the sewer. Um, the proposal as read is to tear down the existing house uh, which is back in this area and there's a garage which will be removed and a narrow paved driveway going back to the garage in this location. Um, there is one tree, a 22 inch oak tree in the middle of where the house is proposed. It's within the zone B. Two other oak trees are marked to be removed. They are beyond the zone B, uh, but within the flood zone, within your jurisdiction. Uh, so there are, there are three trees to be removed in, in the middle of the, the lot there. Uh, this house went from, there were going from nine, 935 square feet, basically 10%, going up to uh, uh, 1,950 square feet. So we're going from almost 10 to almost 20% lot coverage, of course that's the zoning limit. There's 20% uh, lot coverage. The house uh, is moving back. The existing house, the uh, little front porch on the house is 18.9 feet from the street. Uh, moving it back slightly, or six feet back, to conform to zoning. So the front part of the house is, uh, the closest point of the house is 25 and a half feet from the street line. 70 feet from the wetland, the existing house is uh, 64 feet from the wetland. So we're moving it slightly back from that. Um, but there is an increase in coverage. Um, <coughs> there's an increase in coverage of uh, about 1,000 square feet. Uh, most of it is in zone B. Part of your bylaws say that there's no more uh, mitigation planting required than what would vegetate the zone A on the property. The zone A is, is down across here. There's 203 square feet of zone A on the property, which is all that uh, you know, would need to be 
uh, revegetated, but I've actually shown 400 square feet, basically a six foot wide strip across the front. Uh, and that is proposed to be graded to be uh, a little bit lower, four inches below the pavement, uh, and then, then planted with the native shrubs <coughs> through here. Uh, it'll catch any rainwater, uh, not allow it into the street, and not crossing the street into the, uh, the wetland area down through here, and also proposing three uh, tupelo or red maple trees, two to two and a half inch diameter down in, in this location. Um, so uh, we have a house, it's uh, oh, also the uh, dry wells will be connected to, or rather the gutter, downspouts and gutters will be connected to the dry wells. And uh, so we have a house that's not in the zone A, it's not moving closer, it's moving further back. Um, it's all in zone B and further back outside of the zone B and this uh, I believe does does meet your uh, uh, performance standards for this this type of work I'll take any of your questions thank you Tom Jen do you have anything? Tom are you gonna and maybe I just missed this in your presentation you were gonna move a tree no no I talked to you about yeah. how many trees and you'd suggest we'll leave it and see yeah. what, okay. what happens I knew we were talking about the trees. I just couldn't yeah. remember what we talked about. Right. Um, no, I have no questions. All right. Courtney. No questions. Maury. Um, AC pads, shower, <laughs> wash towers, whatever they are there. I don't see them on the plan. Are they going to be here? Um, if okay. any, they'd have to make their, not on the architecture's, architect's plans. If AC is proposed to be there, then they have to make the deck a little smaller or something. Yeah, because you only have 0.9, right. I mean, 0.5 percent yeah, wiggle room if, there. If, if they decide to, it'll have to get smaller to, to fit, okay. fit the AC in. Of course, I could say that not everybody's AC, but these days most people do. Or it could be under the porch or something. So. Or it could be split. Yeah, yeah. or it could oh, be no, split or something. Yeah, but but anyway, something all right, else. just yeah. if that is, then you just have to amend that. Yes. Thank you. All right. Betsy? This is a picky thing, but where the porch is, that was labeled the garage. <laughs> right. And since I, had, since I had a lot of confusion today going out on field sites. Where what is? I'm sorry. See where the porch is? You know. That was labeled garage. Uh -huh. See where the porch the is? <clears throat> it was, In the you had the stakes at oh, the right oh, corner, but it was labeled oh, garage. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's Look at picky. that lump of coal that Courtney didn't <laughs> that, pass in. That's very picky, but you might, whoever does the stakes, yep. you might remind them that. You know how cold it was when, when you staked it out? <laughs> <laughs> so cold you can't read. Right. <laughs> or right. Yeah. That's it? That's it. Okay. You're doing well. Um, <laughs> Jamie. I'm Melvin. Okay, Steve. Um, I just had some questions in your mitigation calculations, but if you could just take a look at them. Some of them don't add up. 165 and 170 doesn't equal 1,015. But, so in the one, two, three, four, um, fifth one. They're in zone B. It, it doesn't affect my, my view of the, of the you're, proposed. You're correct about that. Um, but yeah, it still is limited by yeah. how much zone A is on Right, the, exactly. On, yeah. It's either one or the other. It just don't, yeah. Whether it matters to permanent filing or not. Um, that was the only question I had. I think it should be corrected on the plan. So. You do it in more than. Yeah, that's. I, that would be fine. I think. Just initial it. You said it was equal to three hundred. Tom, please put in a corrected plan. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Okay, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to try in out pickiness a uh, bit. Uh, the line between the old garage and the new garage, shouldn't that be at least softened? Yes, it should. Sure. That should be a. There you go. Because it disappeared. Okay. That's picky. You got, you got <laughs> it. <laughs> Why? Thank you. Other than that. Layer. Layer. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. oh, see how it looks like it's so easy. Put a ton of. Yeah. Okay. okay, Mark, got anything? <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody else on the board want to 
No. Anything else? Progress. Anything from the public? <clears throat> I, I want to make a motion. Good. Can I make a motion? Yes. Let's make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Second. Right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. It's definitely the way we want to Right. The next NOI. Paul. <laughs> moving right along. Paul Dupee, 87 Adamancet Road, Hatchville, Massachusetts. <clears throat> for permission to construct a patio and screen for <laughs> install native tree and shrub mitigation plantings, conduct vegetation management and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Good evening. Has that been read? Did the advertisement get read? I think it did. So I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You, have it. you, yes, you read, read the advertisement. I read it. So it's, yes. Okay, my turn. Uh, uh, my name is Tom Bunker, for the BSS Design. Uh, with me here tonight is Bernice Waller, a landscape architect, who prepared uh, more detailed the vegetation management plan and all. So I'll, I'll just introduce the project. Uh, uh, discussing the uh, resource areas and whatnot, and Bernice will get into some of the uh, planting. Uh, this, this property uh, is on the west side of Kunameset Pond. Um, very lovely property. Uh, it was built around 1920 and uh, has been maintained, I think, in a pretty good, pretty good uh, condition. Um, on a large piece of land, um, 5.8 acres, and the house is up at one end of it, uh, up in the pond, at the edge of the pond. Um, Kunamasa Pond is in a zone two of a public water supply. The, therefore, the BVW surrounding it uh, has a 100 foot zone A. So. I've drawn the zone A, of the, that's the furthest landward zone A through here. That's 100 feet from the BVW. Uh, there is an inland bank, uh, which is basically the same as the edge of the pond or land under the water body. Um, that by itself is a 75 foot zone A, which runs through here. And the remainder of that is zone B, but the furthest landward uh, zone is the 100 feet from the uh, from the uh, bordering vegetated water of a uh, fresh water pond in the zone two of a public water supply. Well, uh, virtually all of the existing house and all of the proposed work that uh, will be described here tonight uh, is. <coughs> Within that zone A, for any expansion, will require, require three to one uh, mitigation planting. Um, the, I'll, I'll get quickly to what I just passed out. This right here, I've highlighted on that plan. Uh, the yellow, this walkway. Uh, so it's one of those AutoCAD things. It was on an improper layer. It didn't print on the big plans that you have. But if you look through the mitigation calculations and on the narrative and on uh, the thesis plans, it is all accounted for in the mitigation planting. And I can bring in a plan, a more complete plan with that on it uh, later in the week. Uh, 
so that's that's what I just passed out there. Um, LEC marked that wetland uh, and we located it and, and drew drew this this plan up here. Uh, the proposal one I just explained is a walkway in from the driveway into the the side entrance here. Part of it cover uh, is on top of as an existing. Uh, crushed stone walkway through this location and up onto a uh, landing and in, into a doorway here. And of course, I can keep going back to where the larger part of the proposed work is this patio and screen porch. Um, so the uh, patio, well, the whole thing will be patio, stone, stone floor with some walls, uh, fireplace on one side, I believe. Uh, and a trench drain across the edge of the patio here. And that trench drain uh, will you know, collect the water from the patio uh, and will be piped into the series of infiltrators in this location. And the, there is one downspout here uh, which um, is piped toward the pond. That will be redirected and connected to these infiltrators, and while we're at it, we'll take the downspout that's here and put it into the infiltrators. And there is one other downspout in the middle of the house, and that will be piped uh, under the patio and to these infiltrators. So uh, we did calculations on a 25-year storm, uh, which will include half of this house, the, the south half of the house, all the roof area, the, the south half of the roof area and the patio and the screen porch uh, will be uh, contained and infiltrated in the, in the, uh, the four infiltrators uh, as described on the plan in a 25-year storm. Uh, this corner, the, um, the, the pond kind of wraps around in a curve, so the corner of the house here uh, is the same distance here to that inland bank as you get around here, and this, this was designed to not extend further to be the same distance from the inland bank in this location, so it's not moving closer. Uh, so we have a uh, limit of work around here, and I will, uh, if it's all right with you, we'll send in another plan with this uh, walkway shown on it, and also a revised limit of work and construction access, we talked with um, John Searles from Tavares, and he will be a better access to get around the, the south side of that big holly tree that's right there. So uh, that's one change we have to make here, if that's all right. So we move the limit of work and the construction access. I think there's some uh, rows some, uh, some, some roses here that might have to be removed and non-native, but things, things will be planted back there in, in their place um, to, to get, get around. It's too tight here and get around there without damaging the holly or any other vegetation other than lawn. Um, so there'll be no, no access across near the top of this slope on the pond side of, of here to, to do any of the work. Um, we've done the mitigation calculations there on the, toward the bottom of the page there. It's, uh, this walkway is included in the mitigation calculations and all of this coverage and it comes out to 3,123 square feet of native uh, shrub required. It will be uh, filling in lawn area here and here and understory, some lawn and some understory in, in this location. Uh, that, I think, is the end of what I have to say. We can talk about the vegetation management uh, plan. Thank you. Hello, Bernice Waller with Bernice Waller Landscapes. Um, you can uh, take that with you. you okay. Um, great. So
so in addition to the, um, the three to one mitigation that we're proposing uh, for the development of the um, terrace area and the grill and the uh, covered porch, we are also um, proposing a <coughs> voluntary restoration area of um, just over 1,800 square feet of area um, in this zone here that's abutting this zone here is abutting the, the pond edge, the lower pond edge. Um, currently, that area is filled with um, primarily invasive vines, um, bittersweet, green bar briar, porcelain berry, pokeweed, honeysuckle sh uh, shrub, and some more multi flora rose. Um, and uh, all of those are shallow rooted vines. There's not a lot of biodiversity. There's not a lot of food habitat that they're providing. Uh, and, um, and as I said, they're, they're invasive species. So what we are looking to do is to, our objectives are to um, basically enhance the habitat value. Um, this client is a particular bird lover, as you might have noticed when you were out there with all of the bird feeders. Um, so we've, we're introducing a plant palette in that restored area um, with a lot of um, woody shrubs that have berries. Chokeberry is a really, um, it is a great shrub for, it's very tolerant, it has a lot of different, and it has a lot of berries. Uh, Tupelo is another tree that we're proposing um, that uh, has a lot of berry um, production, fruit production. Um, so um, with that, I think um, maybe I'll open it up to questions. Okay, that's fine. Jen, do you have anything? I have a question for Tom and then a question for Bernice. Tom, you said the patio wasn't moving closer? Right. Am I, the, the am I looking at? The patio now is, um, is basically, um, it's not closer to the to the um, existing offset of the wetland edge. It's still in that seven and seven feet five inches. Well, no, I'm looking at Tom's. You, you have a you have something that shows. Am I re reading this plan wrong? Am I reading the plan wrong somehow? You have a shot from the corner of the house. There's 47 here. And 47. And then a shot from the corner of this patio wall, whatever right. that so is, that says 42 to the wetland? 42 to the wetland at the north northeast corner of the house. Yeah. It's 33 to the wetland and 40. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. I see it. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. I was focusing on the back. Yeah. Um, and... Bernice, you mentioned choke, choke berry? Did you just mention choke berry? As a shrub, yes, Where? to replant in the pla on the planting plan. Um, Six to the birch. Am I missing? Yeah, you're, um, I'm using it as a transitional shrub. Um, birch, tupelo, plethora, high, choke, got it. <laughs> okay. Apparently I'm not quick reading these plants tonight, sorry. Okay, that's great, thank you. I went out to the site um, with Bernice a couple months ago now. Yeah, a while. Before it, was it was warmer. A, yeah, it was <laughs> a lot warmer when we were out there. Um, so it's a beautiful site. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Jamie. Pardon? No, really. Okay. Steve? I don't have any questions. Thank Kevin. you. No questions. No questions. Mark? Looks good to me. All right. Betsy? Well, it's to me. So I want to start with you, Tom. And it brings another Tom to mind, Tom Corvo. When I was like, did you no. find a pipe? Pipe. <laughs> what? Pipe. The pipe. There's a discharge pipe. Pipe, a drainage pipe. Wh which one? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. It's off. I mentioned one that's being tied into the drainage. Right. Uh, well, I'll tell you where it is. But I know there's another one up at the front corner. Yeah, the mm -hmm. front corner. Yeah. And it's just a pipe that kind of just goes right to the pond. That's the good old days, wasn't it? Yeah. 
if you want that connect, I mean. Connect it, can you connect it to your drainage? I didn't show her, it's a bit of, it's a, I mean, they could probably trench along the, um, <coughs> in, in the lawn area that goes along the house and probably connect it in there. I didn't have that, you know, I calculated the Where is south it? side of the house in, uh, into the capacity of the oh, system, okay. it's probably not the north side. So this is draining the north side. Going around there. This is, that's draining the north side. It is. Well, it was great, because I love Tom. And I love you, Tom, but I love that Tom Corvo also. Sure. And it just brought him to mind when I saw it. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, the other questions I have are over in the, let's go to the other side of the house to where the mitigation planning is. And there are two trees. It says remove trees. Mm -hmm. Why would those trees be removed? There are two small trees. Um, the, uh, Let's, let's go to the plan so I know which ones. Um, there are two trees here that are being removed. No. These, no. Um, this one and this one. Yes. Yes, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yes, one of them is, um, one of them is severely diseased. If you uh, went out there, the, it, had a, it, must, it had a split leader at one time and then it just got cut off and it's rotting currently. Okay. Um, we had, we uh, initially we went, we had a walk through with Hamilton throughout the entire property to just identify what trees are potentially hazardous or diseased mm -hmm. uh, out there. And then uh, that's one of the trees that they had flagged for us. And then um, the other tree that's noted on the flag is uh, flagged for removal as well because it did have uh, a branch that was rotting that was trimmed off on one side and now it's just kind of lopsided and more and prone to falling uh, so we've also flagged that with Hamilton for removal we are proposing planting two belows um, in our in our uh, restoration plan okay that's all for now all right Maury um, Back to the dead trees. Um, you made a comment about the owner being very bird, you know, lover. And one of the things that they would probably understand is dead trees are great habitat. Mm -hmm. And um, the ones that are over to the um, uh, the east side of the house. I'm sorry, the west side of the house. Those two are in the buffer planting, so nobody should be in there for it to be a hazard anyway. And they're quite small. So, um, are you talking about these two here, or these two here? Well, your your his plan is way different than in 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 as far as this one. Um, it's down. This it will be down. Those two. I gotta get, yeah, I gotta two. reorientate yeah. myself because okay. your plan and his are not the same as okay. far as how the orientation okay. is. I'm Yours sorry. doesn't do due north like his. Okay. So that yes, there. So these two. Okay. Yes, and they're in the buffer planting already. Um, way outside of where they would be a hazard and they're small. So yeah. I think those should they, be left for habitat. These are... Um, I don't even know what they I, are because you didn't label them. Yeah, they're, they're oak. Oak. No, they're, they're, no? Um, they're, they're oak. Oh, yeah. Oak. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. Oak. And what's the other um, one? And then the other one is Isn't an oak labeled. as well, um, an 18-inch caliper oak. Does that say it on there? Or am I, I can't Tom, did, um, Tom didn't put it on there? Tom notes them on his but it's an 18. The one northerly or the one might not have been labeled, but the southern one says. Yeah, the southern one is, but the, I had no no size on that species on that one. But anyway, so they do present good wildlife habitat. So. I, I, I agree with you, and I see your point. Um, but they, they are diseased, and we can potentially um, get better light uh, for the understory that you are planting, which does, you know, have a lot of shrub value that have a lot of berries and have a lot of, uh, we are introducing a lot of habitat um, with, um, not just with the standard mitigation, with the restoration, we are increasing the habitat value. Um, so instead of keeping a tree that's potentially uh, going to fail and rot, we are introducing other trees and shrubs that will will bury and will be pollinators uh, and will really kind of make a move to, to a positive move to move forward. Um, well, certain birds like diseased trees. They don't like healthy trees. Yeah, so, insects. I'm sorry, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, and then the other question so is, you have your, your vegetation line right by that oak that's not labeled that says remove tree? 
by the two trees to that same area. You have your shrubbery line, you know, the little vegetation line. Okay. I, you might see it better on Tom's plan. Okay. Um, it's not really shown on your plan. And the reason I'm asking is you're putting a lot of mitigation on the other side of already vegetated area. Well, this isn't mitigation. Mitigation is this side. This is, this is the um, mitigation. So all these area. dots Outside. here, those are that they're gonna voluntary. That's voluntary. They're restore, They're taking out. They're taking out invasives. Right. But so that isn't in any of the calculation. No. Then that whole big chunk is not in the calculation. That's Tom. No. Correct. Yeah. Tom's yeah. Okay. Okay. This, my, just, this diagram actually might help clear it up. Um, this is just a blow-up diagram of the diagram that we presented. Um, so to, to clear up it's in the uh, front. The okay, I got it. I, I'm all set. It's you in front of point. Okay. Okay, I'm good with that. All right, then the next thing that I have is um, the switchgrass. Yes. Uh, the panicum. Putting that on the edges, it's easily mowed, and I don't really count that as mitigation planting. <clears throat> it's, it's really not a pollinator or wildlife habitat. Yeah, it, it, it is a good trans. It is a good transitional plant from a uh, from a lawn to a shrub. It, it, it is an ornamental plant, so it would yes, not it be it would not be mown. Um, and it is native to the mix of um, this habitat that we're trying to recreate. There are forbs that are um, valuable to. I just our didn't landscape. see any other on the on the property. There, there. Currently, the client um, has some ornamental grasses that we're trying to, you know, change that language into the more native type of cave forbs that we have here. And it is, and switchgrass is a is a, a grass that you'll find in the in a natural buffer zone. So I think it naturally does belong with with the shrubs that we're proposing. All right. It was just predominantly that you know, a hundred and something of those versus. They and do. Then, they do look like they're a lot. I will say because grasses naturally get planted a lot tighter than shrubs because their um, their growth is is not the eight or twelve feet wide that you get with a with a viburnum shrub. Um, so the quantity of them may seem like they're being overplanted, but it's just because they do get planted tighter than the standard three feet on center. All right, then the next question I have on number four in your restoration notes, it says restoration plants will be installed when invasive species reach approximate 80% eradication. What's the time frame on that? Um, I think we'll be able to get uh, to that point likely at the end of fall of 2018. Um, that's what we're anticipating as a planting in the fall of 2018. And if we're not at that point, then we would be moving to the spring of the fall okay. season. Just to give you enough time to get an established plants there, because yep. usually we make you plant of something this large prior to construction. Okay. And due to the fact that you have to get rid of the invasives for it to work, <clears throat> I totally understand that. Perfect. Um, and then the next last question is the hydrangeas. Um, are those um, those are counted in the calculations. Smooth hydrangeas we did include in the mitigation, uh, for the mitigation planting. They're not included in the restoration planting. Um, they, smooth hydrangea is a native plant. It is um, one of those plants that um, does strike the balance between the client's wishes to have something with an ornamental value and, um, and um, our native Cape environment. They they do have flowers. They do flower um, and encourage um, butterflies and things. And they do have large le um, large leaves that then have a lot of duff um, and create habitat. So there are there is a small quantity of native hydrangeas that we have in the mitigation. Quite a few, actually. So my question is, is that we we are not against. We actually are telling people they want to have the beautiful gardens in front of the mitigation or the restoration, yeah. but they can't be counted. So you can still have them, but in those areas, it's not going to be hydrangea. It's going okay. to be wooden okay. indigenous. Um, and encourage them to put pollinator gardens in front of what you're already planting, which takes out more lawn and gives them more diversity and, and all the things that they, uh, uh, you know, it appears that they like. And the other thing that was really hard, and I don't know about anybody else, but all of the shrubbery, all of your plants had the same 
symbol. They all had a circle and a little square. And it just, when we do all counting and stuff, it just makes it easier um, to just have a legend that's a little easier to follow than to sit there with my numbers and counting. Okay. And then the last thing is, where's the third cedar? Because I could only find two, and I'm sure you have it on there, and okay, I just we can't did, find we it. We put two fillows in there, so we do have, do, we, do I note three cedars? Yes, you do. Is that the problem? Okay. Yep. So where's where are all the points so of the trees? I think that's a, a that's an error in the list. So there are two. The plan would, would override the list in that case. So well, maybe not for maybe for you, but maybe not for us. You might be putting three. Okay. Um, yeah. We're, because I counted the tuples and you have all of that. So I don't know. We're, we're missing one tree. Okay. So all right. Great. Tree. So we can edit that. No questions. Um, you were done, right, Maury? Yeah, and I was just going to elaborate that a lot of the trees that you do have on the plan are not, their sizes aren't there, and their species aren't there. And Tom knows when he does his revise, the, the size and the species will be on all those that are in that, in our jurisdiction. Okay, okay and so that's a yes. So I just want to make two comments. Um, one is, uh, I understand your your answer probably based on knowing your clients, but you said that the grasses wouldn't be mowed, but we have a lot of experience where when you have low mitigation planning and then you revisit that area, all of a sudden that's an area that's been mowed and now it's part of the lawn. So I think that was that's Maury's concern. You need to so I, I can see where that happens, but switchgrass by nature has a very clumping habit. It couldn't it couldn't just be mown and turned into lawn. It, well, you, they would have to remove. You would have well, to remove that's the kind plant of what material. Happens. It kind of gets mowed and then it kind of all gets ground in, and then the grass moves into it. How yeah. big are they when you put them in? Not very. You don't say the size. gallon. So everybody, one gallon is about this big, about that tall, and the bush is about that big. Am I right? Yeah, but yeah. In, the, in the first season, though, it grows to, it grows to its full height, um, which um, it, it gets more robust as it grows, but it's that full height in the first year is going to be like three and a half feet of uh, vegetation. And I want to also add that we're not just promoting proposing a monolithic mass of that switchgrass, it is planted with um, high bush blueberry. So it's mixed in. There is high bush blueberry mixed in, so um, it, it's not like if you did want to take a mower to it, all you would be encountering shrubs in that, um, in that area where the switchgrass is planted. It's not. So my other point is, um, uh, I'll tell you what, well, I mean, I agree with Maury about the habitat of dead trees, but uh, the other issue is how do you plan to, to remove these trees? Are you just going to cut it at the base? Are you the two trees that are in the, um, that are in the restoration area, they, do, they will get cut at the base. Um, we and don't, you're going to leave the roots? Um, the, the roots will be stumped. It, it will be stumped. Um, but then the, the root mass will remain. Um, and that's really best, that's really the best uh, practice for uh, the least disturbance of that entire um, soil area. So what I'm gonna suggest, I'm gonna give you an alternative. Okay. And that is to do that and allow, allow it to stump sprout. And then those trees sure. can reestablish there. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, <coughs> there are two areas with the switch grass, and, and it is combined with the high bush. Um, the one up here, here up top, but, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right. Actually, it's three areas. But yeah. So the, the, that's the area that I'm. That. Yeah. Yeah. In 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 condition of asking yeah. some. Well, we usually ask for woody indigenous too instead of just. Well, well, the mixture, have that as a mixture. Okay. But. So we can make a note of that if you want it in the order. Okay. 
We can do one. Are we ready? Yeah. Don't we need a revised plan? Or are we just going to allow Tom to give us a revised plan with the Tom. lock that wasn't shown, the new access, yeah. and all the trees labeled in size? Clarify, did, did, Betsy, did, did you want the other trips? Got a pipe connected? To mm -hmm. the or, another, or a drywall put in. Or a drywall or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a big rain coming up in a couple of days. We'll yeah, it's a Friday. Ground's <laughs> <laughs> all frozen. Which, uh, which two did you say to leave for and allow it to sprout? The two on the south side. The two that says remove tree, move, remove tree. The one that's labeled and the one that's oh. not labeled. The two oaks. The two oaks oh, yeah. on, on the west side. Yeah. Uh, is that the west side? Yeah, the yeah side if north west. is up, then it, yeah, it's west, west side. Okay, is that? So I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing. Take it under advisement. Second. All right. Uh, do we have any other comments or questions from the board? Uh, is there any comment or question from the public? All right. I have uh, one more comment. All right. This is a beautiful site, and once this is finished, it'll be just a nice project. Yeah. Yeah. It is a nice project, and I, I appreciated the thoroughness of your submission. Um, all right, so all those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous, so moved. Thank you. Are you done? So. Next, we have, <coughs> excuse me, Michael O'Brien, 331 Edgewater Drive West, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to reconstruct the existing seasonal pier into a larger fixed pier consisting of six 10-inch diameter pilings, four 6-inch by 6-inch posts, a 4-foot by 70-foot walkway, 6-foot by 16-foot terminal I, Support timbers, deckings and railings, and the associated clearing and excavating. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the commission. That's my For the record, my name is Michael Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant, Michael O'Brien. I have submitted a notice of intent application seeking permission to rebuild the existing uh, Kia ramp and float located at this property. Uh, the property is located on Eel Pond, uh, Ed Edgewater Drive West. There is an existing uh, single-family dwelling, detached garage, driveway, and typical uh, lawn and yard area. <clears throat> In fact, I, the uh, owner is actually was, uh, last time I was there, doing a residing project. Um, so the first thing I did was call him and say, I hope you have a building permit. And he, he said there was a big B in the window and that there was a building permit issued for it. So. I was a little nervous about that a couple weeks before the hearing. Um, but, uh, and if you've been out there recently, uh, the existing uh, pier, uh, have any of you been out there in the last yeah. few days? Mm -hmm. yep. Did you notice the, the uh, ramp, the ski ramp now mm -hmm. that the piles have lifted up? Yeah, so the existing uh, walkway, stairs, ramp, and fixed pier, which were in the water, um, have demonstrated the effects of ice uplift uh, and why it's important to dry piles and not jet them and why it's important to have a bubbler system. Um, this is a new owner, and new to uh, dock construction concepts and the previous owner um, maybe just got lucky and didn't encounter that situation but that was a severe icing situation. Um, mm -hmm. The ramp and float are stored here. Um, the, you, when you read the public notice, you characterize this as a seasonal uh, pier ramp and float. I guess it's it, it's not a permitted as seasonal. He elects, which is common sense, to pull his ramp and float out. 
but it wasn't permitted and approved as in other projects you may be familiar with where it was specifically conditioned to be seasonal. This one wasn't when it was originally permitted. Um, there's uh, a low profile coastal bank and a strip of salt marsh and of course we have uh, resource areas land under the ocean land containing sh shellfish. We submitted in our application package the permitting that was on file uh, both at the Registry of Deeds, the Chapter 91 license, and in the Falmouth, uh, in the Town of Falmouth uh, Conservation Files, an RDA was issued in 1994, which was a time when uh, older docks were being encouraged to seek Chapter 91 permitting, and it was common and routine to apply for an existing dock through an RDA process. So that's attached to the application. The negative determination from this board, I think it was 1994. So what we're proposing to do is hopefully improve the situation, um, both from a use point of view and an environmental point of view and a public access point of view. Uh, currently, there's a set of steps to kind of walk you down the slope to a little foot ramp and then there's a, a fully uh, planked uh, low profile uh, walkway which you'll see on the profile and it's sort of superimposed uh, in a lighter tone line work on the on the new proposed pier it's it's then leads to a small ramp and float uh, the ramp and float um, don't meet your standards for separation to the bottom um, the profile doesn't meet the standards for separation from the salt marsh. It, uh, the, pier, the pier access, I should say, and the pier access also doesn't meet the standards for public access underneath. Uh, the number of pilings supporting the existing structure in the resource areas is the same. So what we're, what we're proposing to do is uh, rebuild this to be more usable. Um, and uh, convert it to an entirely fixed structure so that we mitigate for the problems and uh, non-compliance with your regulations with the existing ramp and flow. The new structure on the profile shows um, if you look You'll, you can see the existing profile, low profile, the new profile elevates to provide uh, five foot separation clearance underneath as is required and it also is making use of the through flow decking which allow for 50% sunlight penetration along the entire walkway. <clears throat> so um, if not for the fact that this isn't a velocity zone, um, this would meet all of the standards in your regulations at FWR 10.16. But it isn't a velocity zone, but given the fact that it's previously permitted and licensed and is a significant improvement over current conditions, um, we believe it's a, a better situation than currently exists. Certainly now with the ice uplift um, situation, it's better. We uh, filed with the harbor master. He commented no issues. I, I should have mentioned too that this is in the same alignment and same length um, as the uh, previously or currently existing and currently licensed structure. Um, there was a letter from Division of Marine Fisheries uh, where, which comments on the uh, the benefit to being elevated above the wetland resource. Um, they make a statement about what should be done and basically they comment that the, while the through flow decking is a good uh, improvement, the elevation is also sort of re beneficial to elevating also prevents shading, but the two combined is uh, the best situation which is what we're proposing. So I think that sums it up, and I'm here to answer questions. Okay, thank you, Mike. Jim? Mm -hmm. 
Mike, did you just say that the this one's the same length and same size as the permitted one? I said that this is the in the same alignment and the same length. Um, there, there is a slight increase in width to create the access to, over the coastal bank, and there's a slight increase in width of the gangway to make it more uh, usable. But I think if you look at this in the context of the fact that there's through flow decking and you discount the open uh, areas, the overall uh, shaded out footprint has been reduced from what's existing. So yes, there's a slight increase in width. How about length? Because the Chapter 91 license has this structure as 54 feet and you have this structure as 70 feet coming up and over that bank. And the existing chapter, or the permitted Chapter 91 license has a 5 by 5, 5.5 by 12.5 float and you have a 16 by 6 float. Right. Mm -hmm. the over, well, I can split. tell you that the overall length of the structure that they refer to, which is common, is from mean high water, not the No, actually structure. it's from the whole structure. <coughs> well, mean high, actually, mean high water is 47.5. And the overall structure of the existing wood pier is 54. Uh, the length of this pier is 48 feet from mean high water, as described on the plan. Yep, and it's 70 uh, overall. Right, mm -hmm. but the licensed and approved pier and what's on the ground today is the same footprint that we're constructing within. But, but no, because your float's different. Your float's, you're proposing a 16 by 6 float. It was licensed for a 5 by 5 by 12 It's, it's 12 nearly 30 square feet large. Well, um, I don't know that I agree. Uh, first of all, there's no Numbers float. Numbers don't lie. There's, there's no float. I um, understand that, Mike. I'm not, I'm, what I'm saying is you're making statements and saying it's the same size, and I'm reading the Chapter 91 plan, and I'm reading your plan, and the numbers don't jive. So that's why I'm asking. It's not the same size. The float you're proposing and the float that was permitted under We're Chapter 91 is... We're not proposing a float. We're not proposing a float. Here. Or the, the end of that pier is the, or the, the end of that is 16 by 6. So your T section, whatever you want to call it, is your can I, you see L. This, uh, yeah, can that. You, can you see on the drawing the fine line that represents the existing flow? I'm um, just going to hear. Yes. yes. That fine line is surveyed footprint is what is on the chapter 91 plan. It's the same. They built it in accordance with the chapter 91. Yeah. I can say that with complete certainty. I can, I need to prove it to you. Well, tell me why, just tell yeah. me why it's different then. Just explain it to me, that's all. Well, if I had known about this, I might have been able to be prepared to answer. You submitted the documentation, Mike. I know. I told you. I, I told you I hadn't gone out and looked at it. I said, "Did you submit the documentation?" You said, "Yeah." I said, "Great. I'll look at it." Looked at the documentation today. You submitted the documentation. Don't tell me I'm, I'm hitting you with something you don't know because you're the one that submitted it. I'm not really sure what that brings to the conversation, but um, if you look at the chapter 91 plan, you don't have brought up a hat I know. If you look at the chapter 91 plan, yes. It talks about the, there's, a, there's a dimension on here from the beginning of the structure. And I'm talking about their their existing flow in your proposed T. Or I or Platform. Okay, so the existing flow is five and a half by twelve and a half. Yeah. So. So you're lengthening it. Okay. So you're lengthening it by. Well, I see what you're doing. Let me answer your question. The existing flow is five and a half mm -hmm. 
Let's see. Mm -hmm. 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. We're eliminating the float. Yep. And we're, not, we're not going out any further. Okay. But we're going to take that and convert it to um, six foot instead of five. Okay. Now. Got it. I see what you're doing. And we're going to make it 16. That's so you have a 16. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I get, it. I get what you're doing now. Um, it, it just, your, okay. your regulations allow the terminal T or N section to be 100 square feet. Mm -hmm. So 6 by 16 is 96 square feet. I'm not going to disagree with you that there's a little corner here mm -hmm. and here that doesn't cast, today it doesn't cast a shadow, but this will cast a shadow, but it's through flow decking. So if you yep. really did the math, it's less shape. Okay. It's, yeah, no, I, I get what you're doing now. And, and, and you're lengthening it. It's an improvement in my mind. Well, well, it's an improvement with the flu throw decking. I'm not quite sure if it's an improvement with with a, a much more solid structure and a velocity zone, but that's for the board to decide. And then you're lengthening it. If you look at the Chapter 91, the overall length is 54. And your peer profile adds up to 70. So, so you're going up and over that stairs. Right. I, okay. Um, so the up and over the stairs yeah. okay. we thought was good. Um, in fact, the RDA from 94 kind of mandated that to be done if you read the findings of the RDA. The findings of the RDA. If you bear with me. Um, it's on two two A. This is This is this is fifty four. Um, the findings. Getting to it. The land with another dog should extend to the embankment in Bongo Yeah, there you go. The, um, the land would end of the dock shall be extended to the embankment and elevated off the marsh. The correct access to the okay. dock. Okay. No, I was just so, trying to figure it out. That's all. So I I am totally agreeing and disclosing that this is slightly uh, bigger in footprint. Mm -hmm. But the environmental benefits of through flow decking, elevation, eliminating the bottoming of the flow all seem to make uh, environmental improvements. Okay. Uh, one other question, Mike. What is the What is the elevation? What's the separation from the platform from mean low water to? And what I'm getting at is, and you know how sensitive I am to building structures in a velocity zone. Um, what I'm getting at is, you've done a number of these, and there's one in particular one on Eel River East that went from a smaller type you know, pier like this, smaller structure, pipe supported structure, to this. It had a ramp going up off the beach over the water and came back down. And then the applicant came back and couldn't figure out how to tie off their boat and wanted pilings on either side. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 And that's. Um, that's just one I want to make sure it doesn't happen here, that we're not going to be coming back and asking for pilings because it's no. a fixed structure versus a float. No, in fact, we designed this. So th this is 16 feet from pile to pile. The boat ties nicely to it as opposed to 12 and a half foot float that you have difficulty tying to and docking and and may actually cause. No, I'm talking about, the, talking about the, the, the client. Your your client couldn't figure out how to tie to his new dock. Yeah, Betsy yeah, remembers. Yeah, yeah, Betsy remembers which one I'm talking about. Well, well, well the problem with that one was <laughs> you were now the, you know the piles were 16 feet apart, and the guy had like a 20 foot boat, so right. the gunnel kept sliding underneath. Yeah, you this, know which one I'm talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, this is not that situation. I, know, I, it, I, I do. I mean, it's a permanent dock. It's fine, I, but I do have concerns with taking these smaller type structures because it. I mean, 
from what's out there now, this is going to be a, a, a much more substantial structure. Mm -hmm. So, okay, thank you for explaining the thing to me. I was just missing the, the fixed T thing. I need to answer that if I could. Yes, uh, yes. I don't know if it's much more substantial. I think it's an improved structure overall. It's more resilient. It has more uh, environmental benefits than uh, the current dock if you really compare the two. <coughs> and I think it's consistent with other um, decisions you made. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks. Oh. Courtney. No questions. More. Jen has asked them all. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just had two quick ones. Um, I've been noticing going out to a lot of these docks lately that the Chapter 91 license requirement for public access signs are no longer on any of these docks. Yes. And we have to, I, without, I don't think we should give compliance without the Chapter 91 mm -hmm. public act. And it's supposed to be where they can access, not hidden so that they don't know. It has to be exact, you know, where the five foot height is. So just make sure those are put on. And they're very clear in your 91 license. Yeah. Um, in fact, if I could just say, they're, they're enforcing that strictly now. They give you a template for what the sign is supposed to say. And I don't know if you folks know this, but in addition to your compliance, we're, they're, they also is your compliance, and they won't issue it without the signs. Yeah. Well, it's been slipping through the cracks a lot, so I think it's finally got to this the is point new. where people, yeah, mm. everybody's been complaining about no, you know, no visible signage. And mm -hmm. uh, it used to be they had to put the building permit up. They had to put the house number on the dock. I mean, there were a lot of requirements back in the day. And the only other question I have, I was reading the old um, RDA, because I, I do remember this because I was on the board then. Your signature's I know. Cool. Um, and I think this did have, was supposed to have flow through dock. I know, great. If you look where it says fiberglass, it, it's not on the floats, but on the, right over the salt the marsh, right. it'll say right on it, it says fiberglass. On, and, what are you looking at? Um, on your chapter 91 license, it says uh, wood fiberglass on the ramp and everything. So oh. I'm just curious if, you know, I'm glad you, you're you fixing that now. Um, and then the last thing is um, <coughs> we are going to condition this, that there's no tying up on the sides of the dock, only at the end. Oh, can we, can we on one side. Uh -huh. Well, you can't tie up the, you can't dock it's perpendicular a straight, to it. It's a okay. straight, I mean, we absolutely would. Are there going to be a ladder? We, we absolutely would expect to condition that only one boat can one tie. One boat. And okay. if you want a railing or Maybe something. You want a railing on one side. Okay. But and we can't, it's only f uh, six foot on Yeah, the you can't tie up yeah. right there. Which side, side do you That'd want? That'd be even worse than the, the thing side. slipping yeah. through. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just say one side. Yeah. They're both almost the same. Windward. Yeah. I would probably open. put yeah. the boat here because of southwest wind. wind. Uh -huh. Keep it. Is there a mooring field on that? There's no mooring field. No no. Yeah. That was my. <laughs> you other. just pointed your so, you, you, you kind of pointed your own. No. <laughs> this that, side. Oops. That was in my notes. No mooring field. And um, is there going to be a ladder on this? Now that it's fixed. Uh, no, because I think the end is low enough that it doesn't okay. need a ladder. Well, if there is going to be one, it'll just need an amendment. See how that ramps down? Mm -hmm. they, we did that. This elevation seems to work well with most boats that are in this. Okay. But, yeah. Well, you show a railing on this, so obviously there's going to be a railing on one, one side. One side of the other. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And this is an improvement to the environment. Betsy. Yeah, so that's my only comment. I mean, we all hope that you don't have a hurricane mm -hmm. and velocity uh, mm -hmm. zone waves coming in here, but you could certainly have lower surges and and presumably if these piles are driven correctly, it'll survive that. Whereas yeah. the old dock would be washed up river. Mm -hmm. In fact I, I already I advised him to invest in if this were approved to immediate to make sure you have bubblers. I know oh, yeah. some clients we, that are having didn't have bubbles that had driven piles in this storm. They were yeah. uh, they saw a few funny things and they ran out and got some. Uh, you know they bought bubblers um, yeah. that they didn't have. Bubblers. All six piers used to be required to have bubblers. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And actually, another thing that all pier all docks where the ramp is on the in our in the resource buffer, usually in a coastal bank, that you had to do mitigation planting that piece of that dock, the the ramp that. Is in the buffer. But is in the is buffer. Over the huh? This is over the stairs. Mm, that's the but that area that you'd have to mitigate for the the 
part She's that's in the buffer. Doing new no, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna, okay. I'm, not, I'm not gonna talk anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now. What's not relevant to this project? <clears throat> well, they might start getting. I, I think this is the first time I've seen anyone uh, kind of quantify the value of the light decking in terms of the footprint. That was rather inventive, I thought. Um, <laughs> Jamie. Uh, my only comment is I appreciate all the detail in the narrative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all I know. All right. Steve? Sure. My granddaughter's been sick for two days, so I've been having a wonderful time reading all these things. <laughs> <laughs> Great detail. Um, I, I have a question about the existing dock. It, uh, although we don't, I think, have any enforcement, this dock's going to go. I don't know oh, yeah. how late you've been out there, but. I, I don't think the posts are more than a foot in the ground still. No, in fact. They're going to either float away or get torn away. Right. And I was checking the distance to the next docks, figuring out who was going to catch this dock <laughs> when yeah. it came. Well, we were. And, and as you know, the rules of insurance, it wouldn't be the owner's responsibility. Sure. I, I think not. Uh, uh, fingers, crossed, would, fingers crossed he would be, if this were not approved, he would be trying to get a uh, dock contractor in here to redrive those piles. Obviously, you can't do that with the ponds all iced in, and I'm sure the waiting list for driving piles is probably pretty long right now. Yeah, it's not iced in. It's funny that, like that. It's not iced in? I, yeah. I just well, when, when I was there, it wasn't an iced in any longer, and that's what I was trying to figure out about the eruption. But, Madam Chair, I really don't have any questions on this project. So. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Kevin? Um, based on uh, the last uh, doc that I think we were involved with pretty much in the same neighborhood. Does the guy already have his boat? Yes. Uh, um, he has a boat, but he's in the market of purchasing a new boat, and I don't know anything about the new boat. That he's okay. Kevin has one of because, uh, <laughs> you know, the last time we had one of these things, uh, they went, I shouldn't say this, but they went away with a, a bigger dock when they we figured out that it wasn't very viable with the dock that he was proposing. Mm -hmm. Nice boat. <laughs> so as long as he understands <coughs> that this is what he's, you know, if he's buying a boat, he's, he's got to buy a boat, better buy a boat that will fit there. Oh, he's very much aware of it, Kevin, yes. he can't make it any bigger. Right. Huh? He can't make it any bigger because yeah. it's in the velocity zone. Right. Yeah, he could so he never make it ever bigger. bigger. No. And, and I'm sure Mike warned him about yes. that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> hmm? Hey, Mark? Yeah, I have a question, I guess, for us as well as for you. Uh, going to a fixed dock means that that thing's pretty tough if you've got kayaks, canoes, sunfish, that sort of thing, because you can't get up on the dock. It's four and a half feet above the water. So you end up dragging it up on the shore. Mm -hmm. and doing the that, kayaks. Doing that once a year is okay, but doing it every weekend means you're, you're just going to kill the mm -hmm. marsh grass that's there. Yeah. I don't know what we do about that, but it's, it's the downside of having a fixed dock, which is... Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We've, well, we've actually I don't see any, any solution to it. I'm yeah. Just well, somehow. the ladder. The ladder, and you just try to like muscle it up on top. It's not. It's really. Uh, it's designed to be. Th the deck is three feet above the water surface at mean high tide, and this t the tidal zone here is about 15 inches. So it'd be. You're right. It's about four to four and a half feet at low tide. Yeah. No. We, little kids are out there having yeah. grand time with their kayaks, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. they come onto shore because that's the only way to get out of the boat. And I don't. You're correct. We have any way you to deal correct. with it? Yeah. Um, I don't have any comment, though. Well, it's something we should think about mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the future. Because yeah. you're right, because a lot of people do. Right. Yeah. We had one design where they were going to kind of Can't slide it. Yeah. But, um, Courtney had some elaborate system. And you know, used to use, like, life boats. You know, right. Right. raise Wasn't a there, it, yeah. What are they called? Davits. 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 Yeah, no, I was going to do that. Had, remember somebody <laughs> had a... 10 years old. Yeah. yeah. Somebody had a steep yeah. staircase. Yeah, it was in West Fountain. Yes. Yeah, and they had a a rail a rail a system. Right. Yeah, I mean there are, there are ways to deal with it. So uh, is that something we want to ask them to come up with? Well, I don't no. think they, they have to. to. They no. may or we don't know what they're going to do. This is what's in front of us now. Yeah. I don't know about if they have kayaks. I mean, 
I, I would think they might have kayaks. I mean, most people will have a kayak or two on the water. So. But of course, we realize that this project is not permitted just for the people who are now living in this. Right. Right. Well, we can just put in the order when we deliberate, you know, no dragging up on the salt marsh and maybe a sign, you know, signage, you know, required, required for, but that's only as good as the person that's going to be responsible to do it. Yeah. But that is a huge problem. May I make a motion? You may. I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Second. Great. Any other Second. comments or questions from the board? Anything from the public? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Right. May I ask Mike another question? Uh, no. just, it, it's not part of the hearing, but yes. It's not part of the hearing. It has nothing to do with this hearing. Okay. So the work they're doing there, because I was wondering if there was a DEP sign. Is that under I, an order of conditions, or is they just doing stuff on the inside? I did re-siding. Uh, I went there to make sure it was staked to put my sign. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I saw a dumpster and the whole side stripped. I immediately called him and said, did you get permits to do this? They got what they call an express permit. Mm -hmm. For the siding and the James. windows and stuff. I don't know what the process the is siding. for your review. No, it's an order for us. Yeah, because there's no impact anything. Does it go yeah. by, uh, does Jen get a chance or Mark to sign off on those? I don't Not know. usually on express ones. That's what they did. Okay. They can still have siding blowing in the salt marsh. I don't, I don't really? know. That's maybe a flaw in the process. Everybody. I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. he. All that stripped off was so. Yeah, but he has a permit to do yeah. what he's doing, and he has a building permit. And apparently, right? Like, okay. Because yeah. I was wondering that too when I was out there. First thing they I saw was from lunch when I was there. Yeah, I was like, the timing Mark. wasn't well, good if you didn't get a permit to me. Kevin, Jamie, okay. Mary. Uh, Mary. Moving along. Why is this? We now have uh, continued requests for a hearing under a notice of intent. Rands Canal Association Incorporated, Rands Canal, map 02010020001, North Falmouth, Massachusetts. This has already been read into the record. And Mike. Thank you again, Madam Chairman. For the record, Michael Borselli. This is a continued hearing. Uh, we reviewed this previously. And um, I was tasked with. Uh, providing separation from the salt marshes on the east side of the channel. And in, uh, there was a letter from the Division of Marine Fisheries. Um, so what we did was we adjusted the center line of the channel by shifting it west about 10 to 12 feet. Um, and we show the recontouring of the side slopes. These are at three to one, which is an Army Corps standard. I th they were slightly flatter than that on the original design. So by shifting it and slightly steepening the side slopes, um, we were able to provide 25 foot separation. The shoaling is on this side. You can see how that bellies out. So there's a little bit more of the, uh, a regrade cut on this shoal. And the, uh, I did the volume calcs and it's about an additional 250 cubic yards to shift it to the west. Um, but it's all in, you know, it's in, it's where, that's where the, where nature shoaled up and that's one of the reasons, that's really why we're here because that's the, the shoaling is in this location here. So I, th I believe that was all I was asked mm -hmm. to, to do. All right, thanks, uh, all set, Jen. Um, okay, we'll go down the table, Mark. Okay. Okay, Kevin? No comments. Steve? Um, I'm not sure, uh, actually, be on the forum yes, for this. Yes. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, we have another project coming up, which is uh, in, in their proposal, they're uh, suggesting that some of the sand um, from this project will be used on their project. It's just a little ways down the, the, the brook. The, the yes, I'm aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we had, the previous application had discussed the DVW taking away all of it. And I just wondered whether 
when we discuss the next application, I want to make sure you two are in sync. I'll tell you what I know. Um, when we advanced this project, we had had a dialogue through Mr. Good, who you met at the last hearing, uh, and the beach superintendent, mm -hmm. who they're always in looking for compatible beach sand, and they have an upland site uh, where they stockpile. We didn't know about the abutters' interest in the sand when we made the application. Our application intends for the sand to be uh, utilized by the town beach super uh, beach committee, or it could be used on any other beach nourishment project that has proper permits. Okay. Subsequent to that, this neighbor has approached Mr. Good. We're, we're not waiting for him to permit. We, if we're, we have a tight window because of the herring mm -hmm. season, um, and Mr. Good is anxious to proceed. But the sand is going to be taken from this site by tr via truck um, in Beach yep. Committee as of right now. Unless this is permitted and it's more cost effective and you've approved it, it could go there too. But okay. it would still be I by just truck. To make sure the, the transport of the sand off the site's the same, and by that's truck. what I had asked the original one. Is mm -hmm. right. the, tran the, the removal of the sand is by the, the same method. Yeah. To us, it really, as long as wherever the sand goes has a proper permit, I, right. you know, we there's can't no, mandate where that sand there's goes. There's no hydraulic dredging yeah. in this project, so it's not like you could hydraulically dredge over there. Okay. It would have to be trucked. Well, I'd rather ask you now than ask them next week and not have you here to answer the question. I, I'm not privy to any internal okay. discussions about that sand. You did have a lot of time to read all your stuff. I did. <laughs> <laughs> You're like three weeks out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. You don't want a sick 10 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. All right. That's it. Awesome. Maury. Um, what is the time restriction on this, Jen? Ooh. It's, it, it's March. March 15th. Uh, yeah. March 15th? Okay, March 15th. okay that's, I just want to. Yeah. That's right. why we're kind of yeah. anxious. Okay, and then on the shellfish relay, you've coordinated with Chuck? Yes, and Chuck commented. And yeah, I saw he yeah. commented. Who pays for that? I mean, is that on town time when they do that? I don't know. I don't have any experience. I don't know how that. Chuck's going to do it. We ought to find out. Yeah. I mean, because it, it should be the burden of the applicant to pay for the shellfish relay, not the taxpayers. Unless the whoever relays it keeps or the shellfish. Or the farmer. Yeah, well, they, the town keeps the shellfish, then. All right, maybe. I, 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 I was just a, I, when I saw that, I thought, hmm. So basically, it's all along that four foot contour, which is a 25 foot salt marsh, set back, offset from the salt marsh. Yes. So that 60 foot crane reach really bothered me on the plan right. because it shows it literally ripping up the salt marsh. Uh, I, I know, but you shouldn't put things that could give people an idea. <laughs> <laughs> because the guy on the crane on the barge, the operator is going to go, oh, there, we can go out 60 foot reach. Okay. Um, so just, I'm happy to revise the plan. Well, no, you don't have to revise yeah, it because you're running out of time. But I think somebody should be, I know Mr. Good's going to be there, and you clearly read this through with him. And you have a big highlighting magic marker, and maybe somebody on the barge with the crane operator to understand because this isn't one of those I that can't. if you do something bad that we're just going to be a little upset be, yes i understand <laughs> yeah and that's just i'm in fact you're scaring me into wanting to revise the plan so yeah. i mean i can submit it for the record <laughs> well i'm just a contractor and i know when, when i when we do septics and stuff and you you read it and you look at it and until you read the narrative sometimes you just go by the plan and when you know Bernice on that last one she says well you know the plan says this but the narrative says that a lot of people don't read both they like pictures so a 60 foot reach really scared me because Mike, you put you just three put the, dots just send me a revision okay that send, was all yeah send me a revision and yeah. we'll close the hearing tonight well I just know that the crane operators say well it said I can reach 60 feet I would and I did it other than that thank you very much that you got that done Thanks. And hopefully you'll no. beat the time no questions. Right no questions. All right. Anything else? Uh, oops. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. All right. Anything from the board? Oops. Anything 18. from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Aye. And our next. Oh. Can I just no. make a comment? Yes. <laughs> well, it's just that. We could you sort of expedite this so we have it to, yep. to sign next week? Yep. Thanks. Because we said that we would do that. Yes, that's that's good. 
All right. Uh, Olga Bariski to Wigwam Road, West Falmouth. This also has been read into the record. Is that this? What? Two this? wigwams. This is the small. Two wigwams. Eight, eight, eight wigwams is not happening. We oh, two wigwams. Yeah. We're on two. I'm joined again, Mike Borselli, for the applicant. I'm joined by uh, Mr. Bariski, uh, who's in the audience, and Attorney Brian Wall, who is here to discuss how the project complies with FWR 10.39. Um, could I could I ask for the record what the quorum is? Sure. Mark, Peter, Jamie, Mary, Betsy, Maury, Courtney, Kevin. Peter's not here. And, S and Steve's, Steve's not, not, on Steve's not on the quorum. So how about here who, who's not on the quorum? Steve is he not on. The rest one. of us are on. We, this is the third. Thank no, you. wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Steve, you said you were here for this? No, we don't, but, but we've had three. We, I, I think was here for the one. first one. Oh, yeah, he missed, he missed one. one. Okay, I mean, this is the third. Well, I have to miss both. Yeah, that's what I have. So this is the third hearing. Um, we, uh, the original application and the original presentation, uh, we presented the project, and we were uh, made aware uh, that we hadn't adequately discussed the DCPC regs, so we continued the hearing to do that. Um, and then uh, we made some changes to the plans, we did some additional research, uh, we adjusted the areas where we were proposing the mitigation uh, with Jen and uh, the landscape contractor, and we submitted some new information, but we, and we also brought some new information to the hearing that evening, and it well it wasn't very well received because of the timeliness of it. Mike, I hate to interrupt. I just need to make a clarification on the quorum, not not you. I just okay. want to make a clarification on the quorum. Steve, do you remember if you were here on the uh, 15th of November? No, I was at a training. Okay, that's the one he missed then. Because you were here on, because we have you on one hearing but not another on the 13th. Betsy, note taker. Well, he, but he wasn't on the quorum. So yeah, okay, so you didn't put him, put him on. Okay. That's, I'll put him down. Thank you. All right, go on. Sorry about that, Mike. I just wanted to clarify that since you asked. So subsequent to that, we just we didn't make a presentation. We continued it, and then we submitted the, we submitted uh, uh, yet again revised plans, additional uh, information documents in the form of letters, and we did that timely. And... Um, here we are. So I'm going to be brief on the project because you're pretty familiar with it. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bariski uh, is proposing to build a 12 by 12 pad that would support a therapy pool on the uh, edge of this deck. <coughs> uh, we, we showed the wetland resources uh, and described them and pointed out that we required mitigation because we were within a no disturbance zone A to a coastal bank. The requirements for mitigation are three to one. Three to one, I have these pretty much memorized now, is 432 square feet. So we propose to do that at, with uh, guidance from Jen. Uh, 300 square feet over here, close, as close as possible to the top of the coastal bank. So 300 square feet there, 132 square feet here for a total of 432 square feet to satisfy the FWR mitigation requirement. 10.39 allows, there's provisions to 10.39 that allow you to do small projects uh, and, uh, and, uh, and allow you to issue permits as long as you uh, satisfy some performance <coughs> standards within the DCPC regs. And specifically in this case, um, you demonstrate that you have reduced the total cumulative resource area impacts. So we were required to do some mitigation planting that cannot be considered as part of the reduction in the cumulative resource area impacts. So we're, off we're offering additional native planting in an effort to reduce the total cumulative resource area impacts. And that additional native planting is shown in a dotted area here. 
um, which is uh, 138 square feet. And then a shaded green area here, which is 330 square feet. So we're proposing to further reduce total cumulative resource area impacts by offering an additional 468 square feet of native plantings. Combining, just so you know the total, um, the total, therefore, of new native planting is 900 square feet. Um, I also submitted exhibit plans to help show our work, as they say, in school. Um, so one of the things you have to demo, you have to highlight what the area of the lot in consideration is, and there's a very specific provision that doesn't allow you to include the salt marsh. And then I also showed the total current before the project, total cumulative resource area impacts. And the, the numbers associated with those are in the form of a cover letter. Um, that I submitted to you that runs through the math. And uh, Attorney Wall also submitted some documentation that takes you through how, in our opinion, we uh, qualify and you can issue a permit for this uh, very small uh, alteration. So it's 144 square foot pad for a therapy pool uh, for 900 square feet of new native land. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Attorney Wall, and then we're both here for questions. And also, uh, I failed to mention that Mr. Bursky is here, and he did submit a letter as well for the record that sort of gives you the historical uh, uh, story of the property. And we're, we're all here for questions. Thank you, Mike. Good evening, Madam Chairman uh, and members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Brian Wall. I'm here to represent the applicant together with Falmouth Engineering. And I was retained in this case because the, T the DCPC regulations don't come up very often and they are relatively complicated. So my task was to analyze those regulations together with Mr. Borselli and confirm that um, we, they apply, how they apply, what they require, and that we meet them. And so I have a very brief present presentation. I'm just going to walk through how they apply. And they start actually not at 10.39. Is this laser pointer public? Yes. That's yeah. pretty, pretty good. I, I saw it. Tom Bunker had it. And I saw, oh, shoot, I Yeah, everybody's mine. been using it tonight. Right. So in any event, um, the DCPC regulations are found in 10.39. They actually start here at 10.05 in your procedures section. And there's a section 7 called permits. And section 7F1, which has been highlighted here, in my opinion, provides a limitation on the scope of permits that can be issued in the DCPC. And that limitation is it, it limits permits to no more than 6,000 square feet of alteration or 10% of the lot, whichever is greater. Now, it uses similar language to what's in 10.39, but I would again focus on, if I can emphasize the words, this is a limitation on the scope of a permit that the Commission can issue in DCPC. Next is a definition that is very important which is now we're into 10.39, which are the applicable DCPC regulations. And there's a definition of resource area impact. I'll try to do it from my own notes here. Which is different than resource area. So normally what we're talking about are things like coastal bank or land under the ocean, coastal beach, et cetera, or buffer zone. But this is different. This means re 
total cumulative resource area impacts means all areas of a lot and or parcel of land not in a naturally vegetated condition. And then as Mr. Berselli said, it excludes certain things from the calculation. Now we get to the performance standards. <coughs> and the ones that the one that is applicable is 10.396C, but I'd like to just basically go through with this briefly. So when a lot is in a DCPC, the regulations allow work on what's called an undeveloped lot. It must re minimize total cumulative resource area impacts pursuant to 10.057F1. That's 6,000 feet or 10% of the lot, whichever is greater. Work on a developed lot where the existing total area cumulative impacts are less than 6,000 or 10% of the lot may be permitted up to that amount. And then you get to C, which says work on a developed lot where there are existing total cumulative resource area impacts greater than 6,000 feet or 10% 10, 10 of the area, which is the lot in question. Essentially a lot that was already developed before the enactment of the DCPC back in 1996 and 1997. Work on such a lot may be permitted, provided that there is a reduction in the total, mouthful, total cumulative resource area impacts after the proposed project, project is completed. Now, there's no quantification of the reduction. So, in my opinion, the commission has discretion to determine what is an appropriate reduction that the applicant must propose in relation to the project. Now, there is, and, and that is confirmed, I should say, by this comment on the bottom. If you look at this footnote, it says, a presumption has been created to provide certainty to the applicants of the maximum reduction in total cumulative resource area impact that would be requested by the Conservation Commission under 1039.6c. Notwithstanding this presumption, the Conservation Commission may determine that less area return to its naturally vegetated condition meets the requirements of 1039.6c. So basically, I, I consider this to be uh, what I would call a safe harbor, that if, if you do the calculation and you propose 10%, then that automatically meets the regulation. But an applicant can persuade the board, at least attempt to persuade the board, that less is, is uh, possible. And then it says that work may be permitted provided as a reduction. Um, and this is the presumption in section one. So our, our submission to you in this way, um, we, we submit to the commission, the project at issue is a 12 by 12 concrete pad. And as Mr. Rosselli went through in his presentation, um, we are proposing 468 feet of reduction to total cumulative area resource area impacts, which is essentially um, a three to one reduction for the project. And then in addition to that is the 432 square feet that's proposed under 1018. And so that, that's where we get the total of 900 uh, square feet, which is a six to one reduction. If we were to do the 10%, uh, and this is in the letter that I submitted to the board, the way that gets calculated is you take the 20, you take the existing altered land which Mr. Berselli pointed out is 20,380 square feet, and you minus out the 6,000 that you're allowed under 10.07 F1, times it by 10%, and that gives you your figure, in which case we would have to do 1,438 square feet of native plantings. And that would be in addition to the 432 were required under 1018, which would be a total of 1,820. So when the client was presented with the idea of complying with the presumption, the client basically said that would be cost prohibitive. What he's trying to do here is build a therapy pool. It's not a swimming pool or a spa. It's basically like a hot tub without the jets for his elderly mother who needs to exercise to um, avoid the potential for a stroke. And when you think about 1,800 square feet of planting, for 144 square foot pad, it just seems to be over the top. 
and the regulations allow the board and, and clearly give you discretion to allow a reduction that's less than the presumption. And lastly, what I'd like to point out is the whole idea of it, if you think about what the idea of the regulations was to do, is the DCPC is obviously a very environmentally sensitive area. And so A and B of Section 6 limit new development on undeveloped lots or lots that have less than 6,000. And then when you come to a lot such as this, which is already over the limit, the idea is to allow work, reasonable amounts of work, as long as there's a reduction. And if you think about it in the long time frame, over decades, allowing this project will actually reduce the total impact by 900 square feet. And when you multiply that out over other properties in years of time, there'll be an overall reduction to impacts in DCPs. So our contention is, is that this project meets the performance standards. We believe and we submit to you that the mitigation, the reduction is a reasonable amount. You have discretion to allow that. And it also meets the spirit and intent of the regulation by providing overall reduction. For any questions, I think Mr. Burst wanted to say something briefly as well. I actually, uh, yeah. I got it, okay. Um, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm just <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll step up. Just thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Okay, Jen, do you have anything to bring up? Um, I'm going to respectfully disagree with Brian that it meets the performance standards. The performance standards of the DCPC would require that uh, additional 1,400. Um, but the, the DCPC does give the board the discretion, so it's going to be up to the board. Right. All right. Um, I'm going to start with Maury. Thanks. It's you. Courtney's not on the quorum. No, no I, I just oh. wanted, wanted to start with you since you were the one, I think, who yeah. was raised well, the issue yeah. initially. I, yes, I did. And Betsy actually did has a lot of the homework on that. So. Okay. Um, the, the couple questions I did have looking at the aerials, and thank you very much, Mike, for getting clearer, uh, more updated ones. Um, the only because I know Betsy's already got her whole thing on the DCPC stuff. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple questions, and maybe the applicant would be able to answer them. But in 2005, um, after now that we have these clear aerials, um, compared to 2014, what happened to the big, huge cedar tree um, where you're proposing to put the um, therapy pool? Well, there weren't ever any trees where the actual pool is going to sit. Well, there are actually, there are no trees there now. If you look at two, oh, 2005 and 2014, only because those are about the same time of year for the foliage, because some are in the spring, some are in the fall, some are in the summer when they do um, satellite imaging. Okay. These two are pretty much the deciduous trees, our leaves are the same, you know, so that's why I picked those two as the closest to compare. So if you look almost where the pool is proposed, off the end of the deck, there's a, in the, in the 2005, there's a huge evergreen. Um, it could be anything, I'm just assuming it was a cedar, it could be a pine. But then in 2014, in that same location, there's nothing. Yep. And right. then there also, then when you go to 2000, 16, um, it's clear that there are garden beds in the driveway now. The, the <coughs> island that was deciduous, I know, um, evergreen shrubbery is now void. It's all deciduous. And I noticed that there was nothing along um, the, uh, what would it be? The, the south, yeah, that's more. So it would be like the south end. Um, they're all big established crypt cryptum areas, which are evergreens, but you don't see them in any of these aerials, um, not even 2016. So I guess my, I'm just concerned that there has been, there has been landscaping done there, I would assume. And again, you go to the, fifth, the 05 to the um, 14, and it's pretty clear that that shed wasn't there or the fire pit. So those are just things that really, you know, when you talk about mitigation planting, a lot of times you have to give things up, that, which is more important, the pool 
you know, the, the, your, your mom's therapy pool or the places that you could actually get rid of and, and put back into native vegetation to give you your, your 1,800 square feet that's required. Um, so that's just something to think about on, uh, for you. That's all. And Betsy's got the other thing so, covered. So, so, oh, I'm sorry. Let him ask. Sorry, I, I don't know if you want to clarification and respond. Um, so when you're looking at 05, the tree that you're looking at there, that's canopy cover. Where the actual pool's going to sit, was, there's never any trees there. I, I have a photo from there's you. No tree. But, where's the but tree? now there's no tree there yeah, anywhere. That, that's that's not, not where the I'm not, I don't know the exact location where its trunk's at, but there is no canopy right. anywhere. What so happened to the tree? Part of the original submission, I don't know if you can still have them or yeah. if they're handy. I reprinted it in case anyone needs it. I reprinted it as one main photo and they copy it. This was submitted originally. But this is a picture from 1985 when the land was originally here. This, this blank spot here, this is where the pool's going to go. There was never any tree there. Well, where's that, that tree? This tree, it died. It died somewhere in the time frame that you're talking about in 05. We left it there for a while. There was no construction going on at the time. Uh, you know, my father was, he was having a stem cell transplant. So, like, there was everything in the, the whole world for us. For us. So there, was no, there was no plans. There was no intention of doing anything, it died, and we actually left her for a while, but it started to lean, which is why eventually they, they had to do it. Both of those trees died for some reason. Um, we don't but know But you why. didn't get permission to cut them down? Uh, no. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if my, my father did or didn't. Well, I didn't find anything in any of the old archives, but that's that's neither that's it, it's it not the case. Thing. There was no plan. We didn't look at the trees and say, oh, you know, let's cut those down. Like it doesn't affect the view at all. That they were inconsequential to us. It, they're not. As you can see here, back in the original photo, this, this blank area that you see here, I'm happy to hand it to you. I have mine still. Yeah. I mean, somebody yeah. else might need them, but somebody I else want this or mm -hmm. so. Um, that's where the pool's going to sit. So that tree could still be there today. It wouldn't, wouldn't matter to me uh, in terms of what, what we're looking to do with this with this project. They just they just died and they were moved and I, I don't know. If so was it just a question? Only because these again because of the clarity of these new aerials. Um, was there obviously between 2005 and 2016 some extensive landscaping done there, or changes? I should say changes in the landscape. Because, like I say, the cryptomeria aren't in this, which are not a native plant. They don't just grow. I mean, if they were cedars, it, you know. But so I'm not sure. Um, they're on the areas. south side. They're big, beautiful green trees, evergreens. Um, and big. The, they're big. And the, um, which means that they were transplanted in there. And then the island is totally re-landscaped. And the tiki bar, fire pit, um, shed area you know, when you look at these aerials, there is no, in 05, there is no shed. And I put a mi micro, uh, and a magnifying glass on it, and you can see the fire pit now, but there was no fire pit back then. So these are areas that you could give back for vegetation versus saying, you know, you can't, you can't do the, the amount that's, you know, in our regulations. And we did recommend, just so it's on the record, that the pool, the therapy pool, be put in the deck, um, so that then it's not so, no mitigation was. So it's a, for us, it's a balance between sort of costs, right? Because to put it in the deck would mean we would have to remove the deck. We can't just drop it in. Like we would have to completely remove the deck, and it would have to be structurally rebuilt. Which would probably that in and of itself would probably cost as much as the, the pool would. Um, as far as anything that was done, like the patio that was added, it's asphalt was, was there before, and now it's just bluestone patio. So the footprint of the land hasn't, hasn't been extended at all. Um, there's no, I think you defined it as a pervious or impervious surface. Impervious. Yeah, yeah, so there's nothing like where the stone fire pit is, it was stone before. Like it was crushed down. Uh, where the shed is, it was stone as well. It's still there. In fact, if you look at the shed today, Surrounding it, the old stone from 1985, it's, it's still there. They just, you know, uh, my dad built it himself on, on top of it. So there's, we did never cut down any trees to expand the footprint of the land. Um, the only discussion ever of putting something uh, new on a, on a pervious surface is this therapy pool where the area was, was, uh, was mulch previously. So um, and when your regulations change, 
it was mulched at the time in 1995. So that's <coughs> where I think what led us to this discussion around litigation and all those sorts of things. So we have not removed any any plants to plant anything. Um, the island was switched over, but those were all just non-native ornamental things. They just grown. I mean, they were 30 years old. So there's a certain point you just can't trim shrubs back at all, and so they were removed and just planted with. Uh, other different things, um, including some grasses. So, um, some of the asphalt that was taken up there on the side of the house where the patio is is now mulch. Some of where there was stone on the side of the house is now mulch as well. And I'm not, I haven't put that in any of the calculations of pervious versus impervious, but you now have more, you now have more pervious surface than you did before. And this, there's no plants that we removed ever. The only thing that was ever put down was those tree trees that died 10 years ago. Um, and I, I don't know if my parents got permission to do it or not. But it wasn't part of the project or some concerted effort to say, well, we want to change the land. It was just kind of a hazard because they're, they're elevated. It's up on that hill. You know, the dead tree if you really want it. And then the last question I have for you. With this therapy pool, when it's on the slab, is the top of it level to the deck? The top of it will be above the deck by um, two and a half feet or so, and it will have a cover that seals it, an automated cover that seals it, because it, it has to be, um, I have to have it mechanically operated, because my mother can't, she can't take a cover off, she, she won't be able to use it, okay. she's just there, and I'm not there to do it. So when it's not in use, it'll be completely sealed with the, um, it's a cover for a hot tub that I found, actually, because the pool is, we're calling it a pool, but it's, it's basically, in effect, it's a medium-sized hot tub, okay, just put on the jets. It's built differently, so an elderly person can walk into it, so it's not like the fancy seats or that type of stuff you see. It's, so it'll have a cover, it'll sit on top of it, it'll probably be, the way that I want to build it, the reason I'm building it above ground, I don't have to excavate by doing that, and it'll be at waist height, so the idea is you'd be able to sit in it and then swing your legs over. What it would be easy to okay. Thank you. Is, it, is that answer your question? Yep. Thank you. Betsy. I actually don't have any questions, but I have some comments. And <clears throat> my first comment is just to remind you, since it seems like you're making the decisions now on this land, that anything that's done here, it's in the DCPC, no matter how far it is from the salt marsh, and it requires. Um, permission changes, cutting trees, et cetera, you have to come into the conservation office. Normally, when a tree like this, which is within 100 feet of the salt marsh, is cut, I mean, it may be that it has to be cut, then another tree would be put in its place. Um, the second thing is, uh, I, I understand that many of these impervious surfaces were prior to the DC PC regulations, but it's actually more than three times what would be allowed for anything new. And just to remind the board members who, who the DCPC is a little bit, uh, the rules are a little bit un unfamiliar to you. I'm just going to read two paragraphs. This is from the first part of the DCPC. Would Ten you say what a DCPC is? Just district, right. I know DCPC what it is. is a district of critical planning concern. And uh, we have a section in our regulations, FWR 10.39, land or waters within Black Beach, Sipawisset Marsh, district of critical planning concern. And as we've discussed, any new work, if there is a new lot, the amount of disturbance is no greater than 10% of the lot or 6,000 square feet, which is ever is greater. This lot has more than three times that amount of disturbance. So I want to read a little bit. I just want to read these two paragraphs. This resource area, this is the uh, Black Beach, Sipawisset District of uh, Critical Planning, DCPC concern. concern. State designated. This Resource area contains nationally significant ecological and natural resources, including freshwater and tidal wetlands, waterfowl, shorebird and migratory bird habitat, rare species, shellfish and finfish, 
mud and sand flats, and a barrier beach dune marsh system, which possesses, which possess recreational, scientific, and educational values. In recognition of the presence of these resources, the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service completed an environmental assessment in 1993, which was part of the DCPC um, preparation for this, which proposed federal desi designation of the Sipawisset Marshes National Wildlife Refuge, encompassing a portion of the district. The district is also located on Buzzards Bay, which has been designated by the Environmental Protection Agency as an estuary of national significance, leading to a program to enhance water quality and natural resources through the Buzzards Bay Project National Estuary Program. So this is a really <coughs> critical area. You, you, you all know, and some of you are tired of hearing me say about the importance of buffer vegetation. Um, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit surprised with the letter that says, um, 1,820 square feet of native plantings is cost prohibitive and will render the proposed project too expensive and unviable. People have to make choices. I mean, there are things that I might like to do that I don't have money to do. And the fact is, this, this would be adding additional footprint to, this, to, to, to an area that's already three times what's allowed. And uh, we discussed, and Brian, you weren't here for the earlier ones, but we discussed some options, including putting it on, on the deck. And the final comment that I want to make is, as I said in the last meeting, I'm concerned with your mom's health, just like we are with anyone, but we don't make decisions based on the people living in an area. We're making decisions as to what's being done with this land and what the regulations are. And that's all. Thanks. All right. Courtney, would you like to say anything? Excuse me. I'm going to hold my question, but I'll reserve the right to ask. Certainly. Jamie? Kevin, I should have Martin. When were these DC uh, critical area of regulations passed? 96. 96. Pardon me? 96. And when was this house built? I think you said 80 something. Oh, um, was that? When was the house 85. built? She said it was 85. Yeah. The house was built in 1985. So, well before the regulations. Mm -hmm. We don't require going back anywhere, zoning rules, anything. We don't require going back to. Mm -hmm. Take no. all the structures that are already built right. going back no. to what nope. must be their current regulations. We're addressing if you're doing anything from this point forward. Well, the point that I mean, I, I, the way I read this reg, it says that we're that it envisions the prop the obvious possibility that the property may have more developed land than the current the new regulations would permit. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Oh, yeah. We all agree yeah. with that. Yep. And it also allows you to. If you choose to do some work, to do some work, if you if you go back and somehow approach the, closer to what the reg would allow. Now, I personally, I don't read it as Mr. Wall does. If he's the attorney. I'm not. I read it says you you just have the regulations say to me you just have to get better. And it says if you do 10 percent, you're great. I mean that's that's no no question. If you get better. It doesn't say how much better is, I think, I, Mr. Walton. That's, that's just, what You Brian, have to get better, right? Yeah, here we're, this, this project is offering, what, 468 square feet. Doesn't meet the 10%, but it sure is better. So yeah. an alternative to be to do nothing, and then it won't be any better. So the way I see it, doing something and getting 468 square feet improved is moving in the right direction. And it's actually moving positively compared to doing nothing. Plus the 432 for mm -hmm. the other three you want. So it's actually six to one total mitigation. So if we build a pool, on, if we put a 12 by 12 pad where there's, there's nothing there now, there's well, literally nothing there. I wasn't there. counting the mitigation. Yeah. I, I mean, that, you, you've got to do that. But in aggregate, you're going right. beyond that. Right. Yep. Well, I think that's great. The board has the discretion to decide what you would like to do, whether you accept the proposal or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second.
All right. Uh, anything else from the board? Courtney, did you want to? No. No. All right. You really uh, are. Quite anything huh? else from the public? The applicant? Yeah. <coughs> Brian. Very, very briefly, Madam Chair. Um, I think I heard Jen say that she agrees that the board has discretion, but I heard Commissioner Harlow Hawk say a couple of times that it requires 1800. I don't want to read that first. What Mr. Gardner said is exactly what I'm saying. Wait, that's what it yes. says. We can read it. We right. understand. We understand no. what it says. And, and then secondly, uh, to, to, to Betsy's point about it's already three times over, and again, I'm somewhat repeating what Mr. Gurney said. The regulations envision over time these reductions. And ponder this, if you're the applicant and you want to put a 144 square foot concrete pad for a pool, if you were to do the presumption it's 1,820 square feet of planting, we're proposing 468 instead. If no project was proposed, there'd be no reduction. And so there's actually the purpose and intent of the regulations being fulfilled by the project as long as we show the reduction, which we are showing. And the last point I wanted to make, and again, this is kind of going to the presumption again. The presumption is, it's not based on the project. It's based on the property. And so if you think about it, the 1,800 square foot presumption would apply to this 144 square foot project. Or if the applicant came before you and said, we wanted a three car garage out by the front, not in the buffer zone, so that we wouldn't have to do the 1018 mitigation, the presumption would be 1,800 square feet. So it's 1800 for a 3,000 foot garage or 1800 for a pool. That's why we're here before you. We're just asking you to use some common sense and be reasonable and say it's a relatively small project on an already disturbed area and we're offering three to one reduction and three to one mitigation, six to one planting overall. We think it's a good thing for the DCPC. Thank you. I Knock on that. Easy PC. Well, this will discuss this. Yep. When we in no, deliberation, it, it, it had to do with the common common sense. So I'm just I'm not going. There. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm feeling like I'm like. Yes. Okay. So all those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. The only reason you're not doing it, I went to deliberation. So we don't want to pay for it. Okay. All right. Oh, right. I thought it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like crying, whatever. Now we move on to um, another request to amend Woods Hole Steamship Authority, care of William Cloutier, 29 Luscombe Avenue, 33 and 36 Railroad Avenue, and Railroad Avenue map 51A. Dash O one dash O four four A dash O O O fifty one A dash O one dash O four four B dash zero 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 O O twelve Cowdery Road Cowdery Road map uh, Cow I'm sorry twelve Cowdery Road Cowdery Road map fifty one A dash O one dash O four three dash O O four Juniper Point Road map fifty one A dash O one dash O four two dash O O O A Map 51A-01-043-005, Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Request to amend the existing order of conditions, DEP 25-4151, to perform maintenance dredging of approximately 306 cubic yards of material over 4,265 square feet inside slip number two at the Woods Hole Ferry Terminal. Wow. That was easy. Mm. I have to excuse myself. <laughs> yes. Would someone remember that I'm out yes. there? Yes, wandering around out there. Yes. You Thanks, don't have Betsy. to leave the room. No, you didn't. I do have to leave the room. Well. <coughs> good practice, good it's form. It's a good practice, yeah. It's a good practice. I don't practice. know that she has to, but it is a good practice. I went to a training. We yes, we did. We did training, <laughs> didn't we? Good practice. Uh, well, I don't know. Are there supposed to be butter's cards for this? For an amended? Yeah. For an amended, yes. I didn't yeah. bring yeah, I mean, um, okay. Don't worry about it. We do need to send them to us. Yes, sure. um, uh, uh, good evening, Chairman and um, members of the committee. My name is Rebecca Skolaski, and I'm with Childs Engineering. And I'm here um, tonight with um, Greg from the Steamship Authority, and we're here to request um, 
an amendment for um, some dredging that we've um, that the Steamship Authority has come across um, a need for. Um, their, one of their vessels, the governor, um, ran aground earlier and has gone into dry dock for some repairs to their propeller due to some um, uh, infill of material that's um, reduced the um, optimum dredge uh, elevation within that slip. So they're here to request, um, and there's an ongoing project, as, as, as everyone I think uh, knows, um, that we have come uh, for an order of condition before um, and has we've been um, they've been granted it. So we are here to amend that order of conditions if that <coughs> is appropriate. Um, we figured we'd try, we, we would go to the commission and ask the best way to get this dredging um, accomplished um, so that they can get their vessel back in. Um, I guess it's due to come back in May and they wanted to try and get the dredging done in that time period so that the governor would be able to dock at that, um, at that slip. Right, and you have a you have a time restriction. We do. So it's, it's so a matter of urgency. Oh, it's a yeah. Case. It's a, yes. Sorry for it. And I, I guess my I'll show you what um, we come up with. Um, we have the existing contours. Um, uh, survey was performed by Steel Associates, I believe, and. We've taken that and shown the um, design dredge elevation is minus 16 in that slip. And so the area that we've come up with and the volume um, are shown on your uh, on the application. I think they're on this drawing just now. I believe I have that information. So actually, I think it's written in here. It's 306 cubic yards, what we estimate uh, we will need to remove. So I guess one of the questions. Um, that we had is we went we called the um, the beach um, superintendent to find out if they wanted the material because I believe it was um, appropriate for beach nourishment and in our um, in the chapter 91 license it says that we or in, and I believe it's in the order of conditions that we need to go to the town to see if they wanted it and he's he said he's requested if if it's approved that he, they would like it so, okay. all right and um, the Restriction begins mid January. January fifteenth, yeah. and and um, and the boat is due back before the restriction is lifted in mid May. Correct. Correct. So we are pushing. I mean, they're they're trying to get a contractor on board. So we may have to go to Marine Fisheries, and and I'm not sure that they'll allow us to. But we would request that we, as soon as we can get a contractor on board, we can get this done. Um, and I'm not sure. It, due to the emergency nature, I mean, they need to get their vessel back in. And right, um, but there's only four days until the restrictions start, so we're five. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, but I don't have any questions on right. that. Right, so. okay. Does anybody uh, well, have any questions? Maury does. I just had oh. two questions, actually. Um, the boat was damaged October 27th? I mean, that's what this letter says on, well, I don't know if that's when it was damaged, but that's when Dave and Becky were concerned about it? Yes. Okay. Well, so it's Carl, Carl and Greg reached okay. out to us. Who, uh, that's, I'm just so we, what we, I have. Yeah, we came, I think we, Bob had submitted this a while back, and we've been trying to get it, get it through because of the emergency, the nature. We've talked to DEP, DEP's on board with whatever, they'll do whatever, you guys, they'll go yeah. on board with whatever. They just, you know, this, I guess, the steamship. Right. Well, that's. Because, you know, we have, I, my kids grew up with this thing on their refrigerator, duty or lack of poor planning doesn't constitute an emergency on our behalf. Correct. And we're here for the environment, which is the time restriction. Okay. And if this happened October 27th, and then we received it on December 7th, uh, that that's right? when we received that's it. That's correct, yes. Okay. That's when it's stamped received. Okay. And then our hearing was 110, because obviously the holidays and whatever. So I guess my question is that um, I know you want a one-day restriction. If we expedite this because it's the tenth, when do you have your your dredging guy lined up? I mean, is somebody lined up, sitting like waiting <coughs> patiently for this? No, because we do have to go out to bid for this project. So it's the bid opening is the 18th of January. Yes. Right, which is so after. So you had no urgency to get your bid out before that. 
or did you want this us to approve it before you went for the bid? So, I, uh, just one question. I had we had reached out to Jen to try and find out mm -hmm. if we needed an emergency order of conditions because okay. we were and we've known about this and we were trying to get everybody on board. We didn't know if we needed an order an, an, if they would if it was an allowed. Thing. Oh, I'm not saying it was an emergency. I'm saying you had since October to be looking for guys and putting. And they did a, reach out to us, so yeah. we were okay. trying to right. figure out the best way. Well, to do I, that. again, it's just everybody always needs to have that. You know, I'm special that I need it, and I understand the whole reason for this, and I'm not against it at all. I would just highly recommend that on October 27th, when Dave and Becky were talking, that you were looking for dredging people, assuming that we could maybe get this done in time, and they were right on board, ready to go, standing on the tarmac to say we can beat the dredging, you know, deadlines. Right. But now we're going to make a compromise so you can take your time to find somebody and then dredge in the time frame for the winter flounder. Does that sort of sum it up? Hmm. Okay. When was I'm the sorry to be so blunt, but we hear this all the time. We can't, we can't, we can't. Well, October, obviously they've had trouble with this boat for a while. It was damaged, it's in dry dock. Right. So I'm not going to beat that horse anymore. I want to ask Jen a question. Sure. Has eelgrass moved at all? Because eelgrass does move, and I didn't know if they had. <laughs> I I, I don't know. Okay. I think this plan is less than a year old. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, I, that's I all I care about. I have one other question. Are there, other than the ferry that's been damaged and is in repair now, are there other ferries affected by this? No, that happens to be, I guess, their lowest uh, draft vessel. So. Um, does anyone else have any questions? No. All right. Um, Make a motion to close the hearing, take it under advisement. Second. Okay. And get the green cards to us, please. Yes. And okay, yes. yes. Excuse me. Right away, please. Sir, I'm sorry. We need your name for the record. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, Greg Endicott, uh, facilities and maintenance manager for the steamship. Thank you very much. I'll get this. I'll do this one in Rand's Canal for How next. How long does an RFC take? You know, your bid process. Roughly. Um, we put the advertisement up to So basically three weeks. Well, no, once it's out. We had to have Steel Associates come in do a high, do a survey of the slip. Then we had to go to Childs, get them to design it. Um, so it's a long process. So when do you anticipate to be able to put a trench in the water for that? If permitting was all squared away? Yeah. If you had your permit tomorrow, when would you be able to? We open Thursday the 18th. We could go mobilize immediately once the contract is awarded. But you just said it takes three weeks. For, it's two no, weeks. that's already done. It's been advertised. The bid, all the contractors have the documents. Gotcha. They're submitting okay. bids. We open them the 18th. We go with the lowest bidder. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you very do, much. Uh, do the contract documents require an immediate response? Um, they, our contract documents have language pending approval from Sound of Conservation that, yeah, we want to get it done before the Army Corps restrictions. Of March 15th, and they're pending exemption of the marine fisheries. So you know that one, January. January 15th. January 15th, marine fisheries. Yeah, I'm sorry. And Army Corps. March 15th. March 16th, they have the leave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Anything else, anyone? Who um, seconded? I made the motion. I'll draft well, it. Uh, Jamie, I'll draft this one too for next week, and you guys yes, can sign thanks. it. So you can pick, you can have some, and you can pick the permit up on Thursday of next week. Um, so as soon as you well, we need go, to vote. You'll be opening up. Yeah, but you vote next week. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then right. I'm, I won't issue it at midnight, but I mean, right. we can get it out the next morning. I'll have you know pretty much drafted, and if we have to tweak the language, yeah, and as everything. soon as you can get them. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, that's fine. I'll scan them even. Scan them and, then and then yeah, just send them, and then pop them in the mail. That's fine. And then you'll have that. Okay. All right. Uh, all those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Find, somebody find Betsy wandering in the hallway, yeah. please. Betsy. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. You didn't wander very far. We're almost there, folks. Well, I wandered into the, those guys were talking down there, and they said you can join our conversation. <laughs> All right. Request to extend the existing order of conditions. What the heck did I do with my Jen? Robert Wimet, trustee, 17 Foster Road. Has a familiar ring. 
the East Falmouth, Massachusetts. DEP 25-3537, request a one-year extension, uh, expires oh, wait, is it two, a one-year extension to January 2019, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is this uh, we'll, we'll recommend. It's Beach yeah. Nourishment, Dune Nourishment. So moved. Yeah. Second. Second. <laughs> what? <laughs> Has anybody been out there? They submit all, yeah, and they submit all their. Okay, and because the last time I was out there, that place was trashed. Yeah. So how many cubic more cubic yards are they going to bring in? Oh. Now, you don't have to answer. You know what? Just look it up because yeah. I think that's the only issue I have. I that it, 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 I mean, there's probably a thousand cubic yards they're going to need there. It's gone. Oh, I bet. Some of it's come. I mean, some of the places that it disappeared from very quickly came back. No, no, the vertical. It just vertical chopped right off. off. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all. All Thank right, you. all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. William J. McGann, 5 Foster Road, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, DEP 25-3535, request a one-year extension to January 28th, 2019. Same thing. Same thing. Yes. So moved. Second. And one all those question. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. unanimous, so moved. Oh, Dave, Jamie, did you have that other room? Again. Yes, I one asked about the conference. Yeah, okay. Just a second. Excuse me. Jamie like would like to uh, discuss something. Briefly. Anybody going to the conference? No. Um, how, how are we doing this? Well, I, I put it there to see if you guys were interested. There are some, there are some uh, interesting um, workshops. Uh, there's actually a couple I'd like to send a new agent to, so I know if you're going, so I'll probably go with them so this was um, not in my folder the last time I looked so I would like to you know. I got this for yeah. wasn't in we've my folder either we just know I we think just we all got it I took them out of yours we, we just oh. put it in <laughs> <laughs> we just put it in anyway um look them over let us know and we just I we just I just printed it out I think it was like late last week sometime yeah so. I haven't looked in my folder since okay. Thursday or Friday so, yeah there are two oh yeah they just got there so yeah oh, stop. <laughs> I <laughs> there, there's a plant ID one at like it's the, the same people the okay well, how about if we discuss just just like it again next week if you get that thank you all right Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. But oh, yes. Of course, it's a oh. wonderful venue. Jamie, the answer to your favor? questions. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Someone. I will be going. Jamie, the answer to your question.